I am Dr. Vikas Kapoor. I head the Department of Minimal Access GI and Bariatric Surgery in Narayana Super Specialty Hospital, Gurugram. I am very fond of doing hernia surgeries. So people call me a herniologist in my inner circle. We run a very robust program in all sorts of hernia surgeries. We are going to discuss a few FAQs which the patients want to know before they go in for a hernia surgery. Laparoscopic treatment for hernias started in early 90s and it has evolved over a period of time. So now we handle very difficult hernias also laparoscopically and at times robotically also. Laparoscopy is when you operate using telescopes. That telescope is enters into your peritoneal cavity or it stays in the abdominal wall and is attached to a camera which in turn is attached to the monitor where you can see the pictures of inside the abdomen or you can see the pictures of the wall and you can do the dissection with very thin instruments. Normally you require about three ports. One is for the telescope, one is the right hand and left hand of the surgeon. So these are small, very thin instruments which are used to operate laparoscopically. So you don't make big cuts in the abdomen. You make very tiny puncture holes and you operate. That is why laparoscopy is also synonymous with keyhole surgeries. Hernia is a defect in the abdominal wall. That means the muscle wall has broken and the contents of the abdomen, that means the intestines pop out. So a person will feel a swelling on the abdominal wall, which can be painful. So these are the symptoms of a hernia. My answer is yes, 99% of the patients, rather 99.9% .9 of the patients can be operated laparoscopically except for a few those patients who are actually unfit for anesthesia because these surgeries are done under general anesthesia so those patients who are unfit for anesthesia might not undergo a laparoscopic surgery or the defect is so large that you have to mobilize the abdominal wall and close it so when you mobilize the abdominal wall that is called component separation which partly can be done laparoscopically but at times we have to do it open so what is in the best interest of the patient should be done so very rarely hernias would require a open surgery most of the hernias can be treated laparoscopically so whenever there is a hernia we can do a laparoscopic repair or start the procedure laparoscopically and if need be you can convert it. So patients should be fit for a general anesthesia then only we can do laparoscopy because we have to inflate the abdominal wall or if we are staying in the muscle wall then we have to inflate that area. So for that we need to pump in carbon dioxide so as to create a working space for us. If we can't give general anesthesia, so this is not possible. So patients who are fit for anesthesia are always taken up for laparoscopy and those unfit will go in for a open surgery. So most of the patients would require whatsoever is required to give a general anesthesia. So the tests would be a blood test that will contain a CBC, a kidney function test, a liver function test, a PT INR, some viral markers, blood grouping, urine routine microscopy, and chest X-ray and an ECG. For patients who do not have any cardiac issues, but patients who have cardiac issues will need an echo. So echoes are done prior to surgery so as to get the fitness for general anesthesia. So surgery would remain the same in most of us. So only the anesthesia point of view, we should be sure that the patient will be safe during surgery. 
so as we have discussed uh, all laparoscopies are done under general anesthesia so patients need fitness for that so you need a laparoscope you need a monitor you need a camera you need a encephalator and you need instrumentation for doing laparoscopy so you need to make ports and these instruments will go through the ports so you need meshes and you need tackers tackers are the fixation devices so this is all what is required to do the hernia surgery and how it is done it is very important to understand that the ot's have to be very sterile because we are putting in foreign body inside so they should not get contaminated with any infection so surgeons always change their gloves whenever they start handling the meshes the fixation is very important otherwise the meshes can migrate meshes can roll because we roll the meshes like a cigar and push them inside the abdomen so these can acquire a shape in which they were rolled so fixation is done minimum at two places so that these meshes cannot roll whenever we are doing a inguinal hernia but fixation devices are multiple whenever you are doing a ventral hernia because in inguinal hernias you put the mesh in a pseudo space and in ventral hernias the meshes are normally intraperitoneal so intraperitoneally you have to fix them nicely to the abdominal wall and we use special kind of meshes which has two materials the one on the abdominal side should get stuck to the abdominal wall very nicely and the other side should be pliable so that the intestines do not get stuck to that wall so these are special meshes which are specially made for intra abdominal hernia surgeries that means ventral hernia surgeries we have a very normal practice that we admit the patients early morning to our hospital they are fully worked up so we will prefer to do them as the first cases in the morning before we take up other cases except for hernias in the same ot so we take lot of precautions all these instruments are etioed and uh, that is what takes time so you have to understand the anesthesia part is different and the surgical part is different giving an anesthesia and coming out of anesthesia might take half an hour each and the surgery per se can take up to 40 minutes if we are doing a unilateral repair and about an hour if we are doing both the sides so that is a bilateral repair for a groin hernia and ventral hernia would depend upon how much intestines are stuck to the abdominal wall so releasing them and reducing the contents whatsoever time it takes is uh, taken and about 15 to 20 minutes it takes to fix the mesh to the abdominal wall the total procedure roughly i think will be about 1 hour but no surgeon will operate the patient by the clock so it is very subjective it is the safety of the patient which is paramount patients are normally discharged almost on the same day or at times they stay overnight because they have a catheter in situ which is removed early morning and then they are discharged most of the patients will start moving that means they are ambulatory after about a couple of hours of surgery and they can have a normal diet at night so it's a very very patient friendly surgery groin hernias are not painful but ventral hernias are a little painful the stay is longer in ventral hernias and shorter in inguinal hernias so one has to understand all instruments if used properly won't damage anything so surgeons are experts well trained so as to handle these instruments so in safe hands all instruments are very safe so telescopes per se do not cause any damage the hot light is connected to the telescope and it becomes cold light so it cannot burn anything so and introduction of telescopes is the least painful procedure so these are not very painful thing it as compared to open you can say pain is negligible i would say most of them 
except for patients having a major cardiac problem whose ejection fraction is less than say 20% and in patients whom we cannot give general anesthesia. So it's a very, very slim category, those patients who are unfit. Patients with ascites are unfit for laparoscopic procedures because their abdomen is full of fluid. So these patients, we prefer to do them open surgeries and rather under local anesthesia. So these patients are not fit. Most of the other patients would be fit. So you have to be physically fit. That means you shouldn't have a major heart problem or a major lung problem, which makes you unfit for general anesthesia. So I would say most of them are do's. There is nothing which cannot be done. Patients are mobile immediately after surgery. Even most of the patients can be discharged home. So uh, for groin hernia, we ask the patients to wear a scrotal support because they are at a risk of developing a seroma. And most of the patients who have a very large hernia would develop a seroma. Seroma is water collection in the residual leftover sac of the hernia. So this fluid gets absorbed over a period of three months and at most six months. So no intervention is required. We just counsel the patients that they'll start feeling a hard ball, which can be like stony hard, and it is just cosmetic. They should not bother about it. And ventral hernia patients for about three weeks, so as to prevent a seroma, we'll give them an abdominal binder, which helps them walking around easily, getting up from the bed easily, and it is less painful because you have to understand meshes are not very elastic. So the abdominal walls are very elastic. So it's very dynamic abdominal wall, but the meshes are not that dynamic. So once they are fixed and there is movement of the abdominal wall and the meshes get rubbed with the peritoneal cavity, will cause a little bit of pain, but this pain will persist for a couple of days and then everything will be fine. Some older patients can develop a urinary retention after general anesthesia. At most, they'll need a catheterization for three days. So uh, it is uh, very, very patient friendly. And as compared to open surgery, I'll say it's a revolution doing hernias laparoscopically because the recurrence is less negligible rather. And infection of the mesh is very, very rare. We, these were the concerns during open era when we were doing open surgeries. See, most of the laparoscopic procedures, when the patients can walk around the same day and they can eat anything and everything the same day in the evening. So rest, we do not recommend. In our hospital, we have a policy that hernia patients should stay for as little time as possible in the hospital because hospital is not a very good place because you can all, uh, the areas can be contaminated and the meshes can get contaminated. So that is why we uh, admit them early morning and try to discharge them by evening or at most next day. So they stay very little in the hospital and the sutures which we uh, apply to the skin, we remove it on the seventh day. So at most a patient would require five to six days of rest, actually not bed rest. Maybe they stay at home so that they can eat their medicines and food properly. They can drive back home. They can, you know, ride a bicycle, they can jog, they can do everything. So almost everything is allowed to these patients. Some patients in which we have done eye pump plus, that means we have approximated the two margins of the defect. We ask them to refrain from rigorous gymming for about three months. Thereafter, they can uh, go back to the gym. So that is what the rest is. So negligible.